So you started off in Bend and your parents were musicians mm -hmm. and stayed here for a while, kind of build a fan base and then you moved to Austin. Mm -hmm. So why Austin? So um, I was about, I was in a time in my life where all my friends were settling down, having kids, doing the family thing. And I was like, whoa, 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 I'm not ready for this. I haven't even been able to start my career. And, um, you know, being here and kind of the music scene was trickling down a little bit. I wanted to move. I had it in my heart. And I had a friend come over visiting my roommate at the time. And I heard him talking about Austin and how great it was. And it's all the music and all this. And I literally put it into my Google search right then and there. And all these things came up and I said, that's where I'm going. And so something seriously in my heart just said, you need to go and do it there. Right. And it made sense. LA, you know, it's so saturated with people trying to make it, whether it be in film, music, whatever. Right. And Nashville is the same way, more on the music side of it. And I wanted to go somewhere where I wasn't going to be spit right back out and I would have a chance. And I wouldn't come home with my tail in between my legs saying I didn't, right. I wasn't able to make it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I was, I did everything I wanted to do there. And I, there's still a lot more I want to do, but right. but I accomplished it, so that feels good. Right. So from leaving Austin, what made you leave Austin to move to Portland and kind of pursue your musical career in Portland after leaving Austin? So after being there for the past six years, I, you know, I've, I've done everything that I envisioned myself to do there. I've, you know, made a residency at a local venue. I was able to meet so many people. I played so many private parties and met some really great people in Austin. Right. Um, and there, you know, I got my scooter, I had the dog, I lived right downtown and everything, everything I wanted. And I wanted when I first moved there, I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. And I've accomplished all that. And, come, you know, there comes a point when, as an artist, you know, I was doing this, I'm doing the same thing there as to where a lot of artists in Austin do. They get caught up just in kind of the Austin music scene bubble. Right. And for me as an artist, I feel like you need to make changes to also help yourself grow and to be able to, uh, it's things to write about. Right. Um, but the number one major reason is I missed my family, I missed my friends, and I've gotten to the point right now where I can do my music from anywhere. Right. I love, have a love for Oregon, I love the seasons, I love the trees, the mountains, the ocean. Right. Austin doesn't have that, and I could be there and be doing all the, you know, making everything happen that I want, but life's too short. I don't want to spend it away from my family and friends, and so right. if I can make the music happen here, then I want to be here. Right. So kind of having it as like a base and then moving. Yeah. And if you're going on tour, you can always come child. back to home. Exactly. Yeah. And I have good people to take care of my dog. Right. <laughs> That's always a good thing. That's important. <clears throat> so out of any covers, you know, a lot of people are kind of with online and the music industry right now, a lot of people are getting big and seen on you know YouTube or even on things like America's Got Talent, all these other things with doing a cover. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been known to or like kind of stood out for someone or for, a, I mean, whether it's a label or someone like that with a specific cover that you've ever done? I have. Um, when I first moved to Austin, it was a big whole ordeal about cover songs. Right. Every venue were like, well, can you play covers? And I was like, yeah, but I didn't really know that many and I wanted to play my music, but right. you know, in order, that's what people like to hear. They like something that they can relate to. So I, I learned a bunch of different cover songs. Um, but my whole deal was I'm going to learn things that are true to me and songs that mean something to me, whether it be something I knew as a little girl growing up or whatever. And uh, so one of them that definitely has stood out is Blackbird. Um, by Paul McCartney and right. John Lennon and uh, I've had people at my shows like in tears crying and you know just because that's this I think it's the song but also the way that maybe my voice does it they you know felt really connected to it so that's for sure probably the one that has stood out the most right mm -hmm. and kind of fit your sound in the way you can kind of portray it oh for sure still without 
where some people can almost butcher cover songs. Yeah. But. And now with, so with those cover songs, so like, is it hard to find work or gigs to play when a lot of venues only want you to play cover songs? Um, not really. I mean, if you know the if you know the covers, right? But the thing that I have had going for myself is that a lot of my songs are just they're friendly to the ears to right. where a lot of people I've gotten people come up saying that not realizing that I've written them so the way that I've made my set lists I've and combined them it's a nice flow of a lot of people don't even realize sometimes that I'm playing my own music right in between you know I'll throw in a cover here throw in a cover there so I mean I haven't really you know some I think with that so a lot of these venues they've been really accepting to me playing because they know that people will like it no matter what. It doesn't really matter if I'm playing a cover song or one of my own. Right. Which is nice. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of local artists kind of have that hard time getting through where any gig they want to play is usually like they have to play a certain amount of covers or mm -hmm. eighty percent covers, twenty percent their own songs because they obviously don't want to drive anybody away. Mm -hmm. Um and being those smaller venues and trying to get people in, it's kind of hard to do that. So, um, with venues and things like that, do they have a hard time selecting or kind of having finding a place to play or no? Um, like with for just covers or because a lot of venues want to, they don't want to push anybody away, so they want people to be familiar with the music. Yeah, things like that. So it's a little bit harder I to mean, find. Definitely in Austin, right in like especially certain areas like 6th street where it's very touristy right that's somewhere that they're like you just need to play covers right and then you know these artists who are great songwriters and musicians get sucked into just playing that which bothers me right because it's like you want to be able to express yourself and but i get it you know people are down there drinking and they want to hear you know their favorite rendition of whatever right just yeah journey <laughs> And so, you know, it drives me nuts because I get some of those people coming to my shows and and luckily I've been given the credit to do whatever I want and I don't have to, do, I could just play all my own music if I want at a lot of these venues that I've, um, you know, done these residencies. And uh, so I get these, you know, some annoying people coming up asking me to play certain like rock songs that I don't, I, I'm like, what do you think from my genre of music that I would know that song? Right. And I don't know. So it's just kind of, it's interesting. Not to say that I could cover, I could probably cover it and yeah. do a good job at it. So yeah. sometimes I've actually done that and I've, I've ended up liking it. Right. Yeah, especially when you've been, and that you've been kind of compared to play people like Kobe Calais and things like mm -hmm. that with the kind of sound. Um, now to differentiate you from other artists, what do you, what would you say that kind of almost sets you apart from other artists and that are out there right now that can kind of almost put your own twist and personality into it to reach out to fans? I think that uh, what I get from a lot of people, and it's the same feeling that I get when I perform, it's just, it comes from a place that's very raw and gritty. and. A lot of people aren't used to hearing that because a lot of people, you know, kind of hold back or keep it, you know, want to d not take any risks with, you know, doing any vocal strains or whatever. Right. And so um, with me, I feel like it really does come from a place that's from the soul and which comes out as that rasp and that grit. And, you know, you can hear it in some artists, but the way that it flows with the songs that I write, I feel like it flows pretty nicely. Right. So you you know you get the fun carefree pop kind of sound, but then you get that blues grit. Right, that hits you it. like deep in your yeah. soul, and like and like actually have like a feeling behind your each one of your mm -hmm. songs. And now playing, I know what kind of preps you to get to play like the little bit bigger shows or something where, for instance, you're gonna go play Munchin Music soon, mm -hmm. and there is a larger crowd and a lot of variety of the audience coming in rather than. Um, some of the places, it's a lot of different than a lot of places in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, so what kind of preps you for that and how excited slash nervous do you get playing those types of shows? I don't really get nervous anymore. 
I just, you know, because the thing is, I, I let go of that a while ago. I'm like, if people don't like me while I'm up here, that's that's fine. Right. It's, it's my time up here to, to just do what I want. And the least I can do is, the most I can do is just be myself and show people what I do. And, um, but it's never steered me wrong. I mean, everyone, I feel like everyone enjoys it from every age group. There's something there for every, every person from, you know, little kids to uh, people in their 80s. I have one of my biggest fans was a 90 year old banjo player. That's awesome. So, uh, Anyway, so yeah, so with that, I mean, I don't really, I kind of just go and do my thing. I try not to think about it too much. That's my the biggest thing. Once you get in your head and you start thinking too much into it, like what if I mess up this or this and that, the more that you just go with it, the more that you can just be free and be natural and do what you want, do what you do best. Right. That's how I feel. Even with the Munch music coming up, there's going to be a lot of people. A lot of people. <laughs> but it's nice to play that and, and kind of... Especially being from Bend, it's kind of like a really nostalgic thing for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be exciting. When I was a teenager, <laughs> I remember being 14, going down there and Thinking just, you're pretty cool. <laughs> just to check out all the cute boys. That's what it was all about, and you know, and meeting. Yeah, it was. But I remember sitting there being like, I want to play up there someday. So it's kind of fun that my first gig back in Bend, um, coming back from Austin, I'm going to be able to do that. And on top of that, my um, percussionist from Austin happens to be coming through in his RV. He's been nice. like exploring the the U.S. with his girlfriend, and um, they're coming up right around that time. So I'm like, you gotta get up there and play. Yeah. So that's gonna be kind of nice to have a piece of Austin there with me on stage. Nice. Yeah. And for your parents being kind of like that influence, did they ever play any types of uh, venues like Munch and Music or anything like that, or where did they? They, How were, did they, they were a lot, um, they did a lot of church and like prison ministry, surprisingly enough. Oh. And so they would, um, when they were kind of doing their thing, they were going around to all these prisons and singing for the prisoners and kind of just sharing this message of hope. And, you know, even though, the, yes, there's a lot of people in there that are there for certain reasons that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily agree with um they're still humans and i feel like they can still enjoy and maybe get something out of the out of music and the, that connection right and um you know they were they were a christian songwriter so that was part of their message too right so that was mainly what they did my dad though was was playing with me and then up until i left he would come and play all really? the gigs with me which was a lot of fun yeah so he's a bass player and um, maybe I'll get him up for a song or two when right. I play in a few weeks, we'll see. And did he ever make it out to Austin to play with you? or? Um, I got him and my mom up on stage when they came to really? visit me for the first time. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Everyone was like, what is, what, what's going on here? It's a little <laughs> partridge family, right? but a lot of people enjoy it. Because you don't really get to see that a lot with a lot of, you know, with families playing together and everyone doing a different instrument and harmonies and all that. So right. it's nice. That's awesome. So your album's coming out very shortly, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's going to be um, released on July 14th. Okay. I um, am actually going to be doing kind of some exclusive, I'll possibly have some albums available at Much Music. So that's going to be something that's special for the, for the Bend crowd, especially yeah. people who've been following me for a while. Right. Um, they'll probably be able to get their hands on one after the show. So, and but I'm excited about that. We're going to be doing. A, there's a lot of things coming up, um, and I've been waiting for it for a long time. So, whether it's here in Bend or in Portland as well. Or? Um, in Portland, but um, basically no. I mean, in London, I'm going to right. go there at the end of July. So we're going to do promotion there, and the Dubai trip that's coming up to promote. Um, and then I, I mean, on a local, on a local level, I'm going to start playing some stuff probably in Bend. People are reaching out to me, wanting me to play at certain different little spots. And right. I always love that. I can't say no to having a weekend out here and right. being able to play a little music while I'm out here too. And then, uh, Portland, I, it's a bit of a mystery to me. So I'm kind of just 
starting from scratch there, so we'll see what comes about, but we're working on a few things. It's just so different because the singer-songwriter scene is a lot different than, than Austin. You know, you see a lot of punk bands and I feel like in Portland. Right. And so I'm really, I'm really curious to get into the, see where I can find the singer-songwriter scene and right. acoustic music. It's slowly moving up. There's a few bands out there that I know and hopefully you guys all can kind of build a little genre pocket out there. That would be nice. That's, yeah. I mean, why not? Right? So, yeah, that's my plan. Just go for it. Go find some spots that maybe I can set up a few shows and Yeah, especially this there. summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be nice out there, so hopefully it won't get too hot. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So what's your, what's kind of your goals in the next five years for recording albums and, like, how far kind of like do you want to tour would you like to try to get behind opening a larger band to mm -hmm. go on tour with or definitely that's going to be one of the one of the main goals um my record label is um hoping that with all the stuff that we're doing for radio and all these promotions and everything that um it's going to get some noise said about me to where we can i can get linked up with it with an, another artist right. and hopefully maybe be an opening act, which would be great. I would love that. Even um, setting up my own tour is probably going to be in the making um, next year. So very cool. that's that's pretty exciting. And I want to get started on my next album. As right. much as I want to go and promote and tell everyone about this one, I feel like I just want, I'm let's, let's keep it going. Right. And now's the time to start that. Yeah. Especially since you've kind of reworked this album a few times and kind mm -hmm. of now that you've Gotten to where you like, you can kind of move on to things that you want to, especially experiences that you've had in Austin. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And now that it's it's fresh, and like I'm totally in the song in the writing process right now of all of that, and I pretty much already have the album, but that's great. I just need to start digging in and getting some recordings done, and um, and go from there. That's awesome. So that's and so then after that, I mean, five years is too far for now. I don't like to think that far ahead. I don't either. It's too much of a commitment. <laughs> right? Very cool. Well, it was nice to meet you. Thank thanks you. For, thanks for sitting down with me. Boy, if you decide to keep coming around, I may hope.